In this episode, I want to talk to you about how long is it going to take until you get some money from your music? Show me the money. When am I going to get paid, Manifest? Chris, when am I going to finally make some money from my music? Well, this episode is going to cover that, so let's do it. I spent the last 14 years playing over a thousand shows, touring 22 different countries, and become a top 40 Billboard charting artist. I fired my record label to go out on my own as an independent artist to market and release my own music, selling thousands of albums and millions of streams. The question I always get is, how did I do it without a label and sell even more music? This podcast is here to show you the way. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my music business in a loyal fan base. So, I'm going for a walk. I got my Fan Base University members call later today, so I'm pretty stoked about that and uh, getting all pumped up for it. It's absolutely freezing outside with a snowstorm, but it's hot inside this mall where I'm walking. And uh, I had a member or a student ask, when am I going to start getting paid? For How long is it going to take until I start getting paid for my Spotify? And that's a good question. You know, I remember saying to one of my coaches many, many years ago, you know, how long is it going to take until I actually start making some real money and actually sustaining myself? And that's not a wrong question. Um, it's a good question, but you have to be, I don't even want to say realistic, but you have to have a plan and you've got to work towards it. The specific question that I was asking way back when was I kept on like, you know, taking these tours they weren't even profitable. They were maybe break even, or I'd make maybe a little bit on the back end. But it was kind of like, you know, when am I going to actually make some money off of this thing? Because I feel like I just keep pouring in and pouring in and nothing's coming out, you know? And let alone touring, it's it's the, the money that goes into making the record and all this stuff. And I remember someone saying to me, you know, you, you put in the hard work up front so you can get the pay later. And I heard someone else say, you know, you work now, you work like no one else, so one day you can live like no one else. You know, you know, a lot of artists, a lot of people will not put the work in up front to build that solid foundation of a fan base. Like, I've been doing this for 18 years, okay? And I guess it's been 14 years full-time, maybe 15 years full-time. But even at the beginning, when I released my first EP, my first album, you know, I wasn't really focused on trying to make money. I was just focused on trying to build a fan base. I was focused on just getting heard, getting it out there, you know, setting up all these things so that... I would have a foundation and maybe make an income off of it. Like, I wasn't even thinking about that, but I was doing all the things necessary. I was registering my songs um, so that if radio played, I'd get paid. I'd register them with SoCan or a BMI or an ASCAP. For me, because I live in Canada, it was SoCan. But I was setting up myself so at least if I did get played on the radio, I could get paid. And so that's step number one is it's like setting up all those things that you can get paid. Is your YouTube set up? Is your SoundCloud and everything monetized and ready so that when you start putting money into Facebook ads or YouTube or you go on a crazy tour that you can even get paid? You know, and if you do go on tour or do play shows, have you set it up so that, you know, you can sell some merch and have some cool merch items and stuff so that you have the ability to get paid in every aspect possible? And sure, that takes time. That's called sitting down with a pot of coffee or pot of tea and putting in all that kind of boring hard work. But it's it's important because you guys are asking me like, hey, how long is it going to take to get paid? Well, you know, it depends how long you how quickly you set all these things up and do the do the hard work up front. You know, um, if you're just releasing your first album, your first EP, it might take some time. It might take a year or two. It depends. You know, it depends how much marketing money you have to put and bring awareness to your project. And it's funny. We say, what's our marketing plan? It's really, what's your awareness plan? What do you have in place to bring awareness for people to find out about your music? How quickly can you amplify that? Okay, if you're walking up to one person a day, it's going to take a long time. If you're boosting a post on Instagram to 10,000 people or a Facebook ad or YouTube ad to tens of thousands of people, you're going to shorten that time of awareness. But then it's not just about awareness. 
okay? Because sometimes it takes people up to seven times before they even really notice you. So you got to hit them again and you got to hit them again. And that's why I repost some of my same posts because I realize there's always new followers. I realize just because I posted something on Instagram, someone could be in Starbucks or just going for a run and they quickly scan through my image, but they didn't even really look at it. And I've noticed now when I'm on my Instagram, when I look at something and it shows it to me once, it doesn't show it to me again. Okay, and a a little ninja trick there is to have two photos so that if you see their post once, then it'll show it again with the second photo that you have there if you have a multi-photo post. Okay, so that's one little strategy. But you gotta remember, people are busy. They need to be, they need to see things multiple times. Okay, and so you gotta realize you can't just throw it out there and assume everybody saw it, everybody heard it. I've said this so many times, you're gonna get tired of your marketing message before everybody else will. You're gonna get tired of, you know, saying to people, People, oh, hear my stuff, buy my stuff, check it out, listen to this. And that's why you got to come up with different stories. That's why you need to get my music marketing promotions guide. Go to smartmusicbusiness.com slash free book and get yourself that because that will help you. Okay. Now you got to keep it up. You got to keep the heat up. You got to keep turning it up. And one of the strategies I talk about in there is, is how to hit the billboard charts. And it's not so much about hitting the billboard charts as it is about bringing awareness of your project. Heck, Let's just forget about the billboard charts for a second. If you do the four-phase strategy that I talk about in there, doing the Kickstarter, doing the pre-order, doing the launch, and then having the the, the post-launch that you'll bring a lot of awareness and continuing to promote, yes, you'll be absolutely exhausted, but I promise you to your music and you will shorten that gap of you starting to make money because you're promoting it. And are you gonna lose money, maybe a bit of money on the front end? Yeah, possibly. If you do a Kickstarter, you're gonna have 10 times better chance of being profitable from your music quicker because Kickstarter is just such an incredible platform and tool and crowdfunding to to make money because that's exactly what it's designed to do is to just bring in as much money. But you'll be like, oh, I don't have a fan base. Well, do you have friends? Do you have family? You'd be surprised at how many people will support you. You know, you don't need a massive amount of people to make a lot of money. I had a buddy who, you know, very small fan base and did his first Kickstarter and his friends and family really got behind him and was able to get the record done. And so, you know, what you would want to do in a scenario like that is get the record done and get it done as well as possible or an EP. Okay, I would probably try and raise still as much money as you can, but do a do an EP so you don't have to do as many songs and make those songs freaking hot. And that way you have tons, tons, tons more money to put into the marketing and bringing awareness to your music. But what most artists do is they say, oh, I have to do a whole freaking album of 10 songs, 12 songs. And they blow all their budget. They blow all their time, blow all their energy into making this thing. They're exhausted. Nobody's even really heard of them. And then they have no money left over to market it. That's really the number one problem I see with artists, man. And that was the same thing. You spent it all on making the record because you see value in that, but you don't see value in marketing it. And that's why artists fail. And that's why artists quit. They don't even stay at it long enough marketing it, marketing. They try one thing, they hire a publicist, they get ripped off, or they hire a radio promoter, or hire someone, and they get ripped off. They don't see the results. They spend a couple hundred on Facebook ads. They go, oh, this doesn't work. I give up. No, oh, eh, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go back and work my corporate job. Okay. You know, and if you have a corporate job, I'm telling you stay in there don't quit your corporate job use that as leverage okay but my point is you just quit you know it's not even that you quit and go back to your corporate job you quit working on your dream and keep going to your corporate job and you don't touch your dream anymore and that's what I'm trying to discourage you from doing is don't quit on your dream stay at this thing it doesn't just manifest itself you know overnight (laughs) sorry for the pun there but it's true life doesn't just hand you your dreams this is why the real successful YouTubers aren't any more talented than, than me or you or better looking. Same with the artists. They're not more talented, better looking or whatever. It's just that they have this relentless ability not to quit. You know, I'm going to share one more story and then we're going to end it. I don't know if it's because I lost my dad to suicide or whatever it is, but I've always had this kind of whatever I work on, I just go all in. I go like hardcore, you know, and I remember as a little kid, I used to collect marbles. I went in all hardcore getting marbles like crazy. I used to collect stickers, basically baseball cars, hockey cars. I went all in. I just went crazy for it. Okay. Skateboarding, same thing. Breathe, eat, slept, skateboarding. I'm the only freaking guy at my high school that um, after the winter, there were salt and rocks all over the parking lot at the high school. And that's where we all skateboarded together. Well, I brought a broom to school and I sweeped the parking lot because I wanted
wanted to skate and I didn't want to lose my skate spot. Of course, I was the first one to get sponsored, became one of the best skateboarders because I was relentless, okay? If you've read my other book, Fighter, Five Keys to Conquering Fear, I was the worst rapper, worst singer, least talented. I was so bad. But I just kept at it, I kept at it, I kept at it. I remember I used to go to the open mics downtown Toronto. This popular rap artist and this other girl rap artist would host it. I think their names was Marvel and Tara Chase. And I remember I was so nervous to get up there the first time. And I went and did my thing. And I went to quickly sat down. And the guy's like, yo, get back up here, Manifest. That was hot. Give us something else, man. That was sick. And I was like, what? People actually like my stuff. And this is after me, like, just, you know, hustling, working, trying to perfect my craft and stuff. And I remember I would go to that open mic every Every single Sunday night before work the next day. I didn't care. I wanted to show up. I wanted to get up on that stage. I would try and write a verse so that I could go perform it, go rock it, or just go freestyle. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted to get comfortable. I wanted to get better at this thing. I wanted to figure this thing out. And back then, I had no idea I would be where I am right now, touring 22 countries, you know, selling hundreds of thousands of albums, millions of singles, and, and now even coaching and helping you guys. But it happened because, not because I was just so talented and I was so gifted. It was because I just put the work in. And I just stayed at it and stayed at it. And now I've got the career, you know? I like to think that I have one of the most successful music careers in Toronto compared to a lot of artists. When you look at with the grand scheme of things, I'm in the top 1%. Heck, I'm in the top 1% of the world of artists. You know, I don't know what it is. It's a pretty low percentage. But let me tell you, the only reason it's a low percentage is because so many artists quit and they give up. Don't give up. Stay in the game. Keep bringing awareness. Get better. Get better in all areas, okay? So I hope that inspired you, man. I'm really pumped up for this fan base university call later today. I'm going to be answering all their questions and just helping you guys, coaching you. And if you want access to me on that kind of a level, a one-on-one level, you need to go to fanbaseuniversity.com and sign up to the membership. It's only five bucks for the first month, and then I think it's 30 a month after that, and you get obviously the coaching with me twice a month plus all the courses. There's some pretty amazing training in there that will help you out. So, hey, hope that helps you out, and uh, I'll see you soon. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also leave a comment or a review and let me know how I've helped you or what other topics you want me to cover on this podcast. I always read them and it always inspires me to hear your story. And also, if you need more music marketing help or you just need more coaching or you need your questions answered in a deeper way, I have a coaching program called Fanbase University. Go to fanbaseuniversity.com to sign up because on the 12th, and 24th of every month I answer all your questions coaching my students plus you get access to exclusive video training on how to market your music and grow your fan base go to fanbaseuniversity.com and start your trial today and I look forward to helping you grow your career cheers